Okay, welcome to this session um, on option pricing. We're going today to see how to price a call option using a two-period binomial tree. You can look at previous video to see how to price a one-period binomial tree. I'm going to use here the risk-neutral pricing method, which is very useful when I have more than one period. So I recommend you actually brush off your skills on this first. Okay, so let's get started and we're gonna uh, take it easy here by actually setting up our tree. So you see that I've actually already uh, formed the branches. Here we have now, which is period zero. Then we have two periods, that's period one. Think of it as being in six months and that's the end of, uh, that's the maturity of my call option period two. Think of it as being one year. Okay, so to define a tree and then I'll show you uh, in a subsequent video how to do it, we need to make some assumptions about returns when uh, going up and down. Okay, and that's what I wanna show you now. So return when the branch goes up, when stock goes up. And I'm going to assume that this return, we're gonna write this RU, think of this being S up over final value over initial value, uh, I'm gonna assume that it's a return of plus 25%, so the gross return is 1.25, and the return when going down, when stock goes down, here is going to be RD is equal to 0 0.8, thing as being the stock goes down by 20%. Okay, so now that we have this important piece of information, I can actually show you how we build this tree. So we start today and the stock price is $100. Now, what happens if the stock price goes up? If the stock price goes up, as I told you, I've assumed that prices go up by 25%. So I'm gonna go up from 100 plus 25%. So 100 to 125 here. What happens if the stock goes down? Well, I'm gonna multiply the initial price by the gross return. So 0 0.8 times 100% or 100% minus 20%, right? That's a 20% discount. And so I end up here at 20. All right, let's now look at the second period. The second period I start here, if I start on my upper branch, I start at 125. If I go up again, my stock's gonna appreciate by uh, 25%, okay? So it's 125 times 1.25. And actually, if I take my calculator, I'm going to find that this, this the final stock price is going to be equal to $156.25. Now, if I'm lucky the first period, but unlucky the second, so that the stock goes down, well, I'm going to multiply 125 by 0 0.8, and that will actually give me exactly $100 even. Okay, so I've built part of my tree here, mostly the upper part. Let's look at the uh, lower part, when the stock goes down in the first period. All right, so I'm at SD for down at $80. Now, I've been unlucky the first period, but then I get lucky the second period. So stock rebounds and jumps by 25%. Well, it turns out that I'm also going to be at $100. Okay, so those middle values are equal. This is what's called the recombining trees because the values, whether you're lucky and unlucky or unlucky and lucky, this you're gonna end up in the same state. Okay, this is going to make things a little bit easier uh, down the road. And then let's look when you're persistently unlucky. So you're gonna lose again 20% on those 80 and then you end up with uh, $64 here. Okay, now what are we talking about? Uh, we are talking about price of a call option. Again, I could do it for a put option but we're gonna keep things simple and really look at the price of a call option uh, that it that is at the money, or sometimes written ATM, such that the strike is equal to the initial price, which is equal to $100 
even maturity is t equal one year and that means that each period that I'm going to write age is equal to a half year or six months. Okay, so that's equivalent to six months. Uh, and the last thing, this is a European style option. I will show you in the subsequent video how to deal with American style option. So European style option is the simplest type of option that these are options that we can actually uh, only exercise at the end. And then the interest rate, which is always useful to have, uh, is such that for one period, right, for one period, so E of R times one half, if I borrow one dollar, I'm going to have to repay one dollar and one cents. Okay, so that's the setup of, of the problem. Uh, now, why, how am I going to uh, solve this? Oops. How am I going to solve this? So I'm going to solve this by basically uh, looking uh, here at using the risk neutral pricing method. Okay, to do the risk neutral pricing, risk neutral. To risk neutral pricing, I need to find the probabilities here, p and 1 minus p, of going up or down. Okay? Well, it turns out that we saw that these probabilities are given by what? They're given by the gross return on the risk free rate minus the return of going, of going down on the down branch divided by the return of going up minus the return of going down. Okay, so here this is equal to 1.1 minus 0 0.8 divided by 1.25 minus 0 0.8. What do we find? Well, we find that P is equal to 2 thirds and 1 minus P is equal to 1 third. What does it mean once I go back to my once I go back to my tree here? Well, it means that the probability uh, of going up is going to be two thirds. In two thirds of the case, I'm gonna go from 100 to 125, and in one third of the case, I'm gonna go from 100 to 80. This applies more broadly on every parts of the tree. So the probability when I'm already lucky, to be lucky again, it's going to be two thirds. But the probability of being unlucky after I've been lucky is going to be one third, etc. Okay, so I'm going to actually write that down in my tree here, just on the on the edges, I'm just going to write two thirds, one third here, two third going up and always one third going down. Just uh, change the color for a minute. So like highlight this formula, which is quite important when we do risk neutral uh, pricing here. All right. Okay. So now how am I going to solve this once I've set up my risk neutral pricing was I what I really want to show you is that we're gonna walk our way backwards so we're gonna go from right to left like this and to go backwards from right to left uh, I'm going to basically solve progressively all the trees that are to the right and solve for the price of the coal on those sub trees going back to the initial uh, value okay so I'm gonna start and isolate some red here. I'm going to start and isolate this subtree here. Okay. Let me just go back to black. There we go. 
Okay, so that tree starts basically as u is equal to 1, 25. And the question is, what is the value of the call here? Knowing that final value is going to be 156.25. If I go up, and that's probably two thirds of going up. If I go down, the value is going to be 100. Well, the first question you got to ask yourself is, what is the payoff of the calls in those states? Well, if the price of the stock's 156.25, I have a call where I have the right to buy the stock at $100. So I'm going to exercise my call. I'm going to buy the stock $100 and sell it immediately on the spot market for 156. And so the payoff of my call is going to be 56.25. On the other hand, if the spot price, and I'm in a bad state, the spot price is 100, I could exercise my call, buy the stock for $100, sell it on the spot market for $100, but I wouldn't really make any money. So the payoff of my call is actually going to be zero. Okay, so now what's the price of the call here? Well, it's going to be, so we know the present value of the expected payoff. So that's the discounting at the risk free rate times P, the probability of going up times the payoff of the call when we go up times plus one minus p, probability of going down, times the payoff of the call when we go down, which turns out is equal to one over 1.1, right? That's the discount rate times two thirds times 56.25 plus one third times, sorry, times zero here. And that's equal to 34.1. Okay, so I'm going to actually uh, mark this here in my original tree. That CU here, the value of the call at this point is actually 34.1. Okay, that's going to be useful information for later. All right, what's next? We actually, next, I'm going to focus on the other part the other right part, which is the part down there, the second subtree on the right. I'm gonna go back and write down that tree and then we're gonna solve it the same way. So I start now at SD is equal to 80. And either I go back up to S down up to 100, it's probably two thirds, or I go down S down down 64. Now what are the payoffs of the call? Well here again if the strike is at 100 I have the right to buy the stock at 100 but then I would only benefit from selling it at 100 on the spot market so the payoff is actually going to be equal to zero and here since the spot price is $64 why would I exercise a call that gives me the right to buy at $100? That makes no sense. So the payoff of the call is actually zero. What does it mean for the price of the call here? Remember, the price of the call is just the present value of the payoffs. Well, it turns out that we don't have very many payoffs here. It's going to be exponential, one over exponential RH, our discounting times P, the probability of going up, times zero, right? The payoff in the up state, plus one minus P times zero, and that's grand total of zero here. Okay, so what do I have here? Well, I'm gonna update and the price of the call at this junction is actually going to be equal to zero. What's next? Well, now I'm gonna so like move one step backwards and I'm gonna focus on this thing right here. So I'm gonna actually go down there and zoom in on on that tree. Just All right, so we start, if I rewrite this tree, we start at S naught is equal to 100, and we can either go up, SU is equal to 125, 
and I know that in that case the payoff of the call because I've done it above right that's this value right here is 34.1 or the price of the stock could go down to $80 in which case I know that the call is worthless there's no way I'm going to get to exercise it before the end okay and so I actually know that also the probability of going up is still two-thirds p is equal to two-thirds probability of going down is one-third and so simply the c naught here the price at origination is going to be again equal to the present value one over exponential rh just let me bring this up a little bit be 1 over exponential rh times the probability of going up times the payoff when we go up plus the probability of going down times the payoff of going down which is 1 over 1.1 times 2 thirds times 34.1 plus 1 third times 0 there are no payoffs down there and that gives me uh, something that's close to 20 point sixty eight dollars okay and that was our final tree so now if I sort of like zoom out easy to sort of like lose track when you have so many trees but if I zoom out and I go back to my original tree here and I actually can conclude that the price of the coal is equal to twenty point sixty eight dollars okay so that's your answer here the price of the coal on this multi-period binomial tree is going to be $20.68, okay? So this is how you can easily price a coal option or any option really uh, using risk-neutral pricing on a multiple-period binomial tree. Remember, this is a European-style option. We will talk about American-style option later, okay? So as always, let me know if you have questions or what you would like to see in the future. Thanks for watching.